Hello, and today's episode of The Heart Of, we're going to talk about my favorite series of all time, Metal Gear Solid. Um, I've been playing Metal Gear Solid for a very long time, starting in 2001, 2003, when the second game came out, and then going to play the GameCube remake of the first game, and then playing the third game and the fourth game. Um, to give a little context before the episode starts, Metal Gear Solid is created by Hideo Kojima, and for the publisher Konami, he started in 1987 with the first original game on the MSX, its following sequel, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, and then it's jumped to the PlayStation 1, and then PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, so on and so forth. So... I'm not going to try to get bogged down to the series history. This is well documented. Um, if this is something that you'd be interested in learning about, all you have to do is YouTube Metal Gear, and there are a lot of channels that really go into the series history. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. What I'm here to talk about is why I love Metal Gear Solid. So I was thinking the best way I would know how to do this and do it in a way that I would find you know, like, succinct and kind of easy to take in is go through each game that I have personally played and talk about why I love it so much. So, here we go. So, the first game, Metal Gear Solid 1, or the GameCube remake, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. So, I have beaten both. Um, I think both games have their charm. So, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes was remade with the controls of Metal Gear Solid 2. And once you kind of play that version, sometimes it's hard to go back to the PlayStation 1 version. But, you know, having replayed the Metal Gear Solid PlayStation 1 version recently, it's kind of amazing that it's still incredibly playable. Not only is it incredibly playable, but it's just a lot of fun. And the story is just so engaging still. So, let's dive into it. Why do I love Metal Gear Solid 1 for the PlayStation 1? Well, um, it's a really cool stealth operative mission. So you play as Solid Snake, and he has been tasked with going to a archipelago island called Shadow Moses Island, and he has to stop this terrorist organization made up from people from his old unit Foxhound, and has to, you know, save the DARPA chief and a arms tech president. And he has to stop a nuclear-equipped walking battle tank called Metal Gear. So, he goes in there. Um, there are a lot of cool twists and turns. Um, the atmosphere for Shadow Moses is, like, dripping. Like, when you get there... And you sneak into the base because it's, you know, um, Alaska. You feel like the cold. You can, you know, the crunch of the snow that the entire cast gives an incredible performance. Um, David Hayter, who plays Solid Snake, is just, you know, a marvel. And just some of the lines and the characters and, again, the twists and turns have always kept me so interested and involved in the series so that's one reason for the first game and then the gameplay itself so at the time i mean it's easy to look at this game in retrospect and being like oh yeah you know whatever but even playing it now it's still so kind of cool to see so when i played it on the gamecube they still had some of these tricks that you know little little michael was just mind blown so for example in both games, there is a psychic you fight called Psychomantis, and the first thing he does is read your memory card. And when you're playing the PlayStation game, he's like, oh, you like, if you have a Castlevania save, you'd be like, oh, you like Castlevania. Or if you had any other Konami games, you'd be like, oh, you like this game or that game. And then for the GameCube version, if you had Super Smash Brothers, you'd be like, oh, you like Super Smash Brothers Melee, don't you? And... You know, you can make your controller rumble, and how you had to beat him was, like, so outside the box. So you had to, like, take your controller port 1 and put it into controller port 2. And that was, like, 
what another you know thing of thinking outside the box is there's a character named Meryl that you run into and in order to get in contact with her you have to you know find her codec but at that point in the game no one's given it to you and one of the characters goes oh just check the back of the cd case i'm like looking through my inventory at uh, what cd case they literally mean take the game case flip it around and you're gonna find it and i did and that's like crazy so these these little moments in the first game where you're like wow this is this is something special and you could you could feel it was something special from how the story was presented how the you know characters were performed and how everything was kind of put together into one cohesive package it's a game that you can definitely run through really quickly um i've definitely beaten it <laughs> quite a few times and then the second game which still looks good by the way for playstation you know two standards you know, you're playing as Snake, and then the game does this great bait and switch where now you're playing as another character, so you're looking at uh, Snake's perspective through this new character, Raiden, and a lot of the same things that you, I loved from Metal Gear Solid 1 was in this game, only we're going to take these themes that the first game presented, so a lot of what the first game was about was choosing your own fate so solid snake goes into this base to confront at the, what he doesn't realize is his twin brother liquid snake and liquid feels that snake had ripped him off so that they made snake who was a clone so let me let me back up two steps liquid and solid are clones from this legendary soldier called big boss when Liquid took over the base, his demands were $10 million and the remains of Big Boss. So he wanted to, you know, do Big Boss's dream. In the first Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, for the MSX games, you were Solid Snake fighting Big Boss. So, okay. Laid some groundwork down. So, the first game is Solid Snake figuring out that he's more than a killing machine, that there's more to him and that he doesn't have to he can choose what he wants to do with his life the important thing is that you choose to quote the game the important thing is that you choose life and live so a lot of is just realizing you're not chained to your fate that you're free to choose whatever you want and it's told exquisitely and beautifully and i think even me talking about it almost can't do it justice to how amazing and incredible that story is so the second game, Snake taking this new world perspective on, now you're looking at him through the eyes of another person, which almost, which already makes Snake, like, even more mythic. And taking those themes of choosing your own fate to deciding that life isn't just about, you know, your DNA, and it's about doing the things you want. So the entire game, Raiden is manipulated and lied to, and it's made by this um, AI organization called the Patriots to... It's, it's interesting because it's <laughs> trying to explain the more convoluted of the games. I guess all you really need to know is, at this point, because I highly recommend playing these games, and again, now that they're more accessible than ever with the new uh, HD collection, uh, Snake goes to stop a Metal Gear... Things go belly up. He's considered dead and missing for two years. Supposedly, he comes back up and he takes over a water treatment facility called the Big Shell with a terrorist organization called Dead Cell. Raiden is sent in there to stop him. And then Raiden uncovers a uh, whole conspiracy theory with artificial intelligence and digital freedom and privacy and how our lives are you know, in the hands of something higher up than us, not religious, but in terms of governmental control and how people can manipulate <clears throat> and, and alter our lives. And that idea of like taking all of that and casting it aside that we are the commanders of our own fate. <clears throat> so that was just an incredible game. The 
third game, you know, well, actually, hold on. Why do I love the second game? So the second game already takes an incredible story foundation and really builds on it and then takes the unique boss encounters that I really didn't go into and then also revs those up. So you have characters like Fat Man, who is a bomb disposal expert on <clears throat> roller skates that you have to fight, and he has this little wine glass with a sippy straw. And then you have Vamp, who is this vampire that heals and then you have lady fortune whose bullets can't like whiz past her and, and she has this giant rail gun and and these character designs and are so cool and, and, and even going back to metal gear solid one you have this giant shaman called vulcan raven with this really cool gatling machine gun and you have psycho mantis that i mentioned who can like control your mind and you have Liquid Snake, who's like Snake's double, and you have first one doesn't really have a lot, like a lot of really like crazy boss fights, but like the ones you have are incredibly memorable. You, you take on a hind D for God's sakes, like it's 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 just a, a good time. And the second one really ramps up the craziness. So you have Vamp, you have Fat Man, you have. Solid Disc Snake, the third brother of Liquid and Solid, who is more closely related to Big Boss, and you have this great samurai sword fight at the end of the game, and you also get to fight Metal Gear in both one game one and game two, and like in game one you're fighting just Rex, Metal Gear Rex, and then in Metal Gear Two you're fighting Metal Gear Ray, which is like an underwater version, you have to fight like a dozen of them, and then in higher difficulties, you have to fight like more than a dozen of them. So those are just like it's it, it's so much fun. And then the third game, they bring it right back to the 1960s, so you get to see the origins of Big Boss and how Big Boss became Big Boss, and to know that there's more to this villain than what they had initially said in the first four games. So. You know, you're going through his origin, you find out who his mentor is. I, I'm not even going to touch the story about this, you know, a story about national ideology, loyalty, loyalty to government, loyalty to people, loyalty to your mentor. It's some of the most beautiful writing in gaming, hands down. One of the greatest games ever made is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I, I say this... You know, I, I know this is all subjective, but to me, Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of the greatest games ever made. And it's and I, having just finished it again, it's still one of the greatest games ever made. And some of the greatest boss fights. So you fight this 100-year-old sniper called The End, and you're, and you're doing this intense sniper battle in the, in the forest. And you're fighting this guy called The Pain, and, and he controls this army of hornets and wasps. And he you know, shoots them out at you, and you, you fight... This gunslinging uh, Soviet soldier called Revolver Ocelot. I know I kept him out talking about in the first two games. I did that on purpose because he's such an important character that I'm not even going to begin to get into the complexity of this double triple agent. Yeah, I know I said double triple agent. You're just going to have to play the game, baby. So he is so cool, by the way. And he does this cool meow thing when he like someone's in his troops. So. <laughs> you know, you, you have these great characters, and then the ultimate, you know, you have Volgan, this this general who can shoot electricity from his hands, and, and you have the boss, who's Big Boss's mentor, and I, just how badass this woman is, and how she's able to, like, take Snake apart, and then, like, disassemble his gun in the field, and throw it aside, and, and her boss fight is just insanely epic and emotional and the speeches she gives are insanely epic and emotional so one of the greatest games ever made and then you have metal gear solid 4 which wraps up everything in this poetic beautiful way and like puts solid snake to rest now old snake due to story reasons that i'm not gonna tell you because you have to play this game and then <laughs> and then you have the spin-off games that go into Raiden, and then you have Metal Gear Peace Walker, which is a handheld game, but in, in you know carries the story on from Metal Gear 3 to Metal Gear 5. And then you have, you know, 
the card games, Acid, and then you have Raiden's own game, Revengeance, which is so cool. And then you go into Metal Gear Solid 5. Now, Metal Gear Solid 5 is split up into two games. You have Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. It's not a demo. Just, just, I'm just going to say that right now. It's not a demo. That's what people say about this game. And they're wrong. It's not a demo. And then you have Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. So think of like Ground Zeroes as a prologue. Phantom Pain as the main course. And just the level of freedom that the game gives. And um, it's not the best story in the series, but it's still a great story. And, and just the characters. And, the, and while the boss fights definitely suffer in, <clears throat> in Metal Gear Solid V, the level of freedom of exploration that the games provide is just downright incredible. So, I don't know, just... Why do I love Metal Gear then? Other than the great story, the, the boss fights, the amazing dialogue, the overall experience of playing them. I guess it's one of those things where when I was younger and I was playing Metal Gear Solid 2, whenever I felt disappointed by something or just let down, it was always something... That put a smile on my face. It was always something I could go back to. It always gave me this warm, fuzzy feeling inside that this is something that, you know, I found on my own. Well, I guess it would make sense to go into an origin story. How did I get into Metal Gear Solid, if you're interested? And I'm assuming if you're listening, you are. Because that'd be weird if you weren't. So, my, I was at a GameStop with my friend, and... She had bought Metal Gear Solid 2. And she was like, oh, this game's incredible. L look at it. Look, it looks incredible. And I got a game I can't even remember. So she played maybe like an hour of it and was like, I'm all set. <laughs> and I was like, let me take a crack at it. So I start playing it. And I'm like, oh, can I hold on to this? Can I buy it? And she was like, yeah, yeah, take it. And Because it was used. It wasn't that much money. And like, I want to say like, it was maybe like, well at like a few years after it had come out so a game came out in 2001 probably like maybe like 2002 2003 i was playing it and i was like okay I'll give this a shot so i play it i absolutely adore it um it's something i played again and again my i found out my friends played it you know at the time with memory cards you can copy so i was able to like get some of the cool like infinite ammo wigs and and get infinite ammo cheats and stealth cheats and it was it, it was so much fun to play around with and then i found out they did the remake of one and then i for the gamecube so i got that and i played that one and then the third game came out and i played that one and then by the, you know when the fourth game was coming out i was like head explode it looked incredible you know seeing that first trailer at the tokyo game show that was like a first-person shooter, but then it wasn't a first-person shooter. It was incredible. And then the spin-offs and, like, Metal Gear Acid for the PSP was an incredible experience. And then Portable Ops and then, you know, all these different versions and renditions of Metal Gear most of the time <laughs> have been incredible. Rising, Metal Gear Rising took a little bit to grow on me. And then... The only Metal Gear game that I sat down and played that was just flat out disappointing was the Zombie Survival one, which makes sense because Kojima wasn't even a part of that game. So, you know, this is just a series that has been with me and has just mattered to me for a very long time. And seeing now that they're doing a remake of 3, like, I'm so pumped and... Yeah, no, this is just... An incredible franchise and the reasons i love it is because it's made with the sincere passion for the story that mr kojima wanted to tell it was made with a lot of heart and it has all these cool things that just make it such a fun time to play so that's the reason why i love metal gear solid absolutely worth playing Michael, this is Solid Snake. 
I just wanted to send you this message by Kodak. I understand that you've been stressed recently, that work has sucked, and I have to say, pretty much everything sucks right now, but it's going to get better for the world and for you. Remember, a strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. And whatever issues have been going on lately, whatever they are, this too shall pass. We will get through these times, and we will come out stronger than ever, like we've been baked in a microwave tunnel. So, I want you to hang in there. I want you to focus on the things that make you happy. And I want you to know that we'll get through this together. So, rock on, my friend. Try to remember the basics of CQC. Try to avoid getting into any unnecessary crab battles. And if you have to go outside, please, take a damn cardboard box. Hang in there, pal. And listen, anytime you're feeling down, just remember this. Michael, you're pretty good.